السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ألا وإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters, tonight is the night of the suffer <coughs> Sixth and 1443 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with September 13, 2021. I welcome to you, you to our new series, which is titled as The Lions of the Forest, Ustul Ghaba. And we are referring to the lives of the illustrious companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And our goal would be in this series to learn about them with the authentic riwayat or the authentic chain of narration, inshallah ta'ala only. Uh, before we embark upon the journey, and this is a long and a blessed journey, inshallah, uh, uh, for, with regards to the, the companions' lives, first we should try to learn who are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, or the definition of the Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sahaba, the linguistic definition is Al Mulazama Wal Anqiyad, meaning uh, adhering, mulazama, adhering to somebody and following them strictly, following him or that person strictly will make somebody a companion. So not necessarily everybody that we see in our lifetime or meet in our lifetime are our companions. There are some who are our very close friends and there are some just acquaintances. Uh, uh, they are not quote unquote, uh, 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 you know, defined as our companion. Our companions are usually when we say these are our companions, meaning those who are always with us. This is the linguistic definition of the word Sahaba. But when it comes to the Sharia, this term takes a little bit different twist, meaning like it has a different definition. Of course, all of these definition and conditions are put based upon the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Since the Prophet Sallallahu is the last messenger and the most important of the mankind and the best of the mankind and most beloved, to be his messenger, to be his companion, there are some certain criteria that people have to fulfill. Not anybody and everybody can come and claim uh, that somebody or so and so is the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But first let's see what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions about the suhba of the Prophet Sallallahu in the Quran. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Najm, verse number 2, مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى the translation of which is, your companion has neither gone astray or neither he is erred. Allah is talking to the Sahaba, to the believers in that, in that time, that your companion, Sahib, i.e. an Nabil Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is not uh, misguided, is not erred. In Surah At-Tawbah, verse number 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the suhbah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, illa tansuruhu. فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهِ إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِيَ اثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا The translation of which is, if you help him or not, if you guys help Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad or not, Allah Ta'ala is saying, فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed helped him إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا When those people, the kuffar, they uh, 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 you know, drove him out, talking about driving him out of the Makkah, when they were uh, uh, the second of the two, the second of the two, when they were in the cave. Uh, and he said to his companion, talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr in the cave of a thawr, uh, when the when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, as Allah Taala says, "Idiyakulu li sahibihi," 
when he said to his companion, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines the companionship in the Quran. La hmm? tahzan, don't be afraid, indeed Allah is with us. Okay. The ma'iyah of the companions, the, the ma'iyah of the prophets and the messengers is one of the ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uniquely described the suhba of not only the Sahaba, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa but the suhba of the prophets and messengers who came before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Arab, verse number 64, regarding Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Allah ta'ala says, فَكَذَّبُوهُ They, the disbelievers, denied him. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ So we saved him and those who were with him. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ means what? Those who believed in Nuh alayhi salam and those who supported him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. And Allah Ta'ala says, مَعَهُ فِي الْفُلْكِ وَأَغْرَقْنَا الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمًا عَمِينَ And we drowned the people who uh, belied our signs, the signs, and they were people who were blind. So with this, we understand the companionship of Nuh alayhi salam is what? They supported Nuh alayhi salam and they were not blind people, i.e. they were not blind in their heart. They saw the truth, they accepted the truth. In the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Prophet Hud. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ We saved him and those who were with him بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا With our mercy, from the, with, the, with the special Allah's special mercy. وَقَطَعْنَا دَابِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَمَا كَانُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ And we cut the roots of those people who belied. And they were not believers. So now we understand that the people who deserve to be saved with Hud salam are the ones who believed in the ayat of Allah and they were mu'min, they were believers. Okay, and now we understand the suhbah here does not just mean anybody who saw the messenger, but rather the one who saw him, the one who believed in him and supported him. Okay, and this is the context from the, from the Quran, the, the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, they deduce the definition of who is Ashabi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions in Surah Al Mumtahina, "Qad kanat lakum uswatun hasanatun fi Ibrahim wa ladina maahu." Indeed, there is the best of example in Ibrahim and those who were with him. Allah is mentioning the Ashabi Ibrahim Alaihi Salam is an example for Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then finally, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put seal uh, upon the Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying in Surah Al-Fatih, Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, والذين معه, and those who were with him, those who are around him. Now you understand what this ma'iyah means when we look at all of this ayat which talks about the suhba of the believers in their times to their prophets, for example, Nuh, Hud and Ibrahim, specifically Allah mentioned these three prophets in the Quran along with Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what is the Sharia definition? The ulama, they said, and this I, I uh, uh, collected from the book of Usul Ghaba of Imam Ibn al-Athir al-Jazari, uh, uh, one of the great ulama who from Jazair, from the you know, Maghrib, he uh, compiled a book where he has collected uh, the names of all the companions and some of their brief, uh, you know, biography and so on and so forth. Uh, not this is not from his book, but this is from the muqaddima of the Sheikh who uh, authenticated or mutalik on his book. He said, "Huwaman laqiyan Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqudatan." The one who saw the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam met the met the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqudatan while this person was awake in his wakefulness. Okay, very important. Okay, mu'minan bihi. At the same time, when he saw the Messenger وسلم, he believed in him. He knew that this is the Messenger of Allah and he was a Muslim. He was a believer at that time. Ba'da huh? ba'fihi. After the Prophet was sent as a Messenger. Not before, after. Hala huh? hayatihi. In, in the state of his life. I Even the Prophet was alive. Okay. Wa mata ala iman And this person who saw the Messenger وسلم, will fulfill all this condition has to also fulfill the last condition that he has to die upon faith. If he lost his faith, then he is not a companion of the Prophet Now let's go into a special section and try to understand the definition even better. Man lakiyan Nabi Wasallam, the one who met the Messenger Wasallam, means those who met him regardless whether they met him for a short time or for a long time. Even the one who saw him from a distance, a glimpse, and he knew that this is the messenger of Allah, he is a Sahabi. Regardless, this person, 
spend short amount of time with him or long amount of time with him. Regardless, he narrated from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu or he didn't narrate from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because there are some Sahaba who didn't narrate from him. And one of the most prominent part is Tariq ibn Shihab radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his narration is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Any narration that he narrates usually it goes to another Sahabi. But is he a Sahabi? For sure. Because he saw the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, regardless whether he uh, participated in a battle with the Prophet sallallahu or not. Doesn't matter. So the one who met the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa any human being and including the jinn, man or woman and that also includes the children and that includes the babies those who were born in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu met them and those babies saw him huh? regardless whether they reached the age of puberty those children or they didn't reach the age of puberty Rather, rather, uh, whether they reach the age of th tamiz, as they say, meaning like the age, age of discerning things, they can discern things, they can figure out this is right, this is wrong, this is this, this is that. Even if they didn't reach that age, a newborn baby who is brought to the Prophet and the Prophet saw him, this baby is a Sahabi, according to the most correct opinion among the ulama of the Ahlul Hadith, insha'Allah ta'ala. Are the angels Sahaba? Some of the ulama they said yes, because they met the Messenger وسلم, But the other ulama they said no, the angels are not part of this because they are not the ones to whom the Prophet وسلم, was sent. The Prophet وسلم, was sent to the, uh, the jinn and the mankind. So these are the only two who deserves to be called the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Um, this is the position those ulama who said that just by seeing is enough you don't have to put any other condition like he has to spend a certain time he has to uh, attend a battle he has to be with the Prophet some certain years he has to narrate no, no conditions can be put like this this is the position of Imam Bukhari also Imam Ibn Abdul Bar Imam Abu Zur Al Razi Abu Musa Al Madini Ibn Al Athir uh, uh, who is the author of uh, Uzdul Ghaba this is mentioned in the book of Al Bahith Al Hathith uh, Sharh Ikhtisar Ulum Al Hadith of Imam Ahmed Shakir. The original book is the book of Imam Ibn Kathir, Rahmatullahi Ali. And this definition, the ulama they say, just by seeing the Prophet, and why it makes a person a Sahaba? Because of the high status of the Prophet. He is not like anybody else. And they brought this uh, understanding from the Hadith. And reported by Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah, on the authority of Abu Sa'id al Khudri. Radiallahu anhu. He said that the Messenger وسلم, said, A time will come upon the people when a group of people will wage a war, a jihad, and it will be said, Is there amongst you anyone who has accompanied the Messenger? وسلم, Sahib al Nabi. وسلم. They will say yes, so victory will be bestowed upon them. Then a time will come upon the people when a group of people will wage a war and it will be said is there amongst you anyone who has accompanied the companions of the Prophet they will say yes so the victory will be given to them then a time will come that the people will wage a war and it will be said is there amongst you anyone who has been in the company of those who accompanied the companions of the Prophet man ra'a man ra'a Man ra'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who accompanies, the one who accompanied the Sahaba. Are there any of those? Some, they will say, some of them will say yes. So victory will be given upon them. This is, Imam Bukhari put this hadith in the kitab, Fada'il al-Sahaba. Virtues of the Sahaba. A Sahaba, it doesn't mean that, you know, by looking at a Sahabi, you become blessed. No. But it's the faith. When they accepted Islam, and they saw the Messenger وسلم, now they are connected with this special fada'il, huh? with this special virtue. So uh, that's why the ulama they said no condition can be put whether, whether that, that, that the, the, the person has to fight a battle or not, no condition can be put. Why they said that? Because some ulama they put condition. Like some of the ulama they said a person to be a sahaba he must at least narrate one or two hadith. He must at least Sorry, sorry. So, um, there's, yeah, one or two hadith. Some of them, some of them, they said like uh, Said ibn Musayyib, one of the Tabi'i. He said at least he has to spend one or two years with the Prophet, or at 
at least he has to attend one or two of the battles of the Prophet But the correct position is this type of conditions of course will make him a special Sahabi but in general we cannot make this the definition of from the Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Those who met uh, from the, the Prophet Sallallahu also this includes the blind people because the blind people met the Prophet but they didn't see him but they heard from him like one of the most famous Waraq ibn Nafil Waraq ibn Nafil and we're gonna discuss his life inshallah in the Sahaba series and also in our Sira series coming very soon inshallah because we are gonna get there very soon uh, about the uh, uh, the prophethood of the Prophet Sallallahu also Abdullah ibn Maktoum the blind Sahabi who was the Mu'addin of the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam now the one who met the Prophet Sallallahu in his time not everybody who met him are Sahaba for example there are some people who were in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu who were in Fizaman in Nabi Sallallahu they know the Prophet Sallallahu is in Madinah they believed in him but they didn't have the chance to meet him they were believers in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu but they could not meet him are these Sahaba they are not Sahaba why they are not Sahaba because they missed him for them to be a Sahaba just one ru'ya one glance is enough but they missed it that's why they have this high level and they are known as Al Mukhadram Al Mukhadram they are cut where they were very close to be a Sahabi but they were just cut little bit and they lost that virtue they lost that virtue to be from the Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so they are known as Al Mukhadram and there are many of the Mukhadram uh, you know, uh, they are no, they are basically defined as the tabi'i. They are defined as a tabi. From the definition, from the aspect of in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were from that aspect they would be very close to be in Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu But when it comes to the narration and so on and so forth, or their grade, they are the tabi. But they are the highest level of the tabi, the muhadrams. So they said, Man laki an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yaqudatan means this person when he met the Prophet he or she was in his or her wakefulness. So seeing the Prophet in the dream would not make somebody a companion of the Prophet Today somebody can see the Messenger multiple times. And even if he saw the Prophet multiple times in the dream it will not make him a Sahabi because he didn't see him in the wakefulness. So as you can see now these definitions help us to uh, you know, sift out those people, uh, uh, they can claim, come and claim that they are Sahaba. And you would be surprised, Imam, I believe, Ibn Hajar, he mentions about this man, Ratan al Hindi, Ratan, the Indian man. He claimed to be the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu after 600 years. He claimed after 600 years that he is from the Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu Okay, uh, when I was uh, very young, I used to go with some of these people who are, uh, you know, with the Jamaat e Tabligh, and some of them they used to come and tell me that in their markas in Raivand in India, their scholars or their elders, uh, the jinns, the Sahaba jinn used to come and visit them, or the Sahaba jinn come and visit them. These kind of things people always claim, okay, but we do not fall into this kind of nonsense. Okay, because these fables and these, uh, you know, myths are always recited by people to, uh, at, they, they try to attract others to their group. Come, be with us because we have the companions of the Prophet from the jinn with us who come and visit us who support our da'wah. That's how they used to, uh, like, convince us when we were very young, we didn't have that much knowledge. But Alhamdulillah, when we started learning, we figured out that all of these are basically khulafat, lies that some people, and I'm not saying all the people of Tabligh Jamaat is like that, but there are people who do that, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them, and guide of Allah, all of us towards the truth. Mu'minan bihi, meaning the person when he saw the Messenger sallallahu he or she has to be believer. And this removes all the disbelievers who were in the time of the Prophet sallallahu who were with him, like Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, who were with him. Huh? At one point they used to love him, Huh? But when he came as a messenger, they hated him. But yet, they met him all the time. And Abu Talib, who loved him until the end, and supported him. Huh? And he believed that he is the messenger of Allah. Believe meaning like he knew that he is the messenger. But he didn't accept the faith of Al-Islam. So, of course, he is not a Muslim. 
not a believer. So he cannot be a Sahabi. And you would be surprised that some people, when they talk about Abu Talib, they say, Hazrat Abu Talib radiallahu anhu. Some of the people are so ignorant. They do not understand what is the definition of the Sahaba and they praise a kuffar, a kafir, who is known to be a kafir. And the Prophet ﷺ attested his kufr and attested his place in the hellfire. But they come and say, Radi Allah, and may Allah be pleased with him. And they get angry if you say anything against Abu Talib. So they are not, of course, a Sahaba. They are not even Muslims. So how can they be Sahaba? Ba'da huh? ba'thihi, after the Prophet was sent as a messenger after his messengership now this in this excludes any people uh, from the ahli kitab and those who saw the prophet وسلم, before his prophethood okay like when he went we know the famous story authentic this event we're going to talk about in the sira class and we have spoken some about it in the sira class already when the prophet went to the sham there was this monk who met him on the way and he was very young at that time and he recognized him and he said this is the the the, the next messenger or the last messenger quote unquote something like this he mentioned so he believed in him he saw him and he attested to his messengership okay but is he a sahabi no because he didn't see the prophet وسلم, after the uh, nubuwa after the messengership so he is not now now you know from the definition or from the story we understand that most likely he's a believer if he died like that, he's a Muslim, definitely. He's a Rahib from monk, but he's a Muslim because he, he recognized the Prophet Because he recognized the Prophet with their scripture, the scripture of the Torah and Injil, the original uh, message, they had it. Some of them, they, they, they contained it. So they recognized the Prophet So he's a believer, but you know, whether he died upon Islam or not, we do not know. None of the other information is given to us. But does this even if you know that he died upon islam let's say for example hypothetically can we call him from the ashabi rasul we cannot because he didn't see the prophet وسلم, after the messengership of the prophet وسلم, came to him Hala hayatihi, while the prophet وسلم, was alive okay and this refutes those people who see him in the dream because now the prophet وسلم, is dead you're not seeing the prophet وسلم, in his life lifetime also it excludes those people who met the prophet وسلم, they came and they found out the Prophet died and they saw him, they saw his face, they saw the Messenger وسلم, but he was he didn't have life, he was dead at that time. So that doesn't make them Sahaba, they are Mukhadram. They are Mukhadram. And Mata al Iman died upon faith. So this person who saw the Messenger وسلم, and he was a believer or she was a believer at that time, but later on, may Allah forbid, they re rejected Islam. Murtad became Murtad. There are some who rejected Islam. Okay, these people who died upon their, uh, you know, uh, uh, apostasy, they are kufar. Forget about being a Sahabi. They're kufar. However, there were some personalities. They became Murtad after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, especially in the time of Abu Bakr as Siddiq, when they they had the Hurub al Ridda. The war of the apostasy, some of them, they denied to give the zakat, as we know that famous story. Uh, so they denied Islam, but then they came back, they repented and came back. Are the Sahaba? The ulama dispute. Some of the ulama, they said, no, they are not Sahaba. They're, they're righteous believers from the rank of the Sahaba, but we cannot call them Sahaba. Because they left Islam at one point. The, the Islam upon which they saw the Messenger Sallallahu they left it. This is their hujja. The other ulama, they said, no. These scholars, these personalities, we consider them as a Sahaba. And one of the famous names that comes to my mind right now is uh, Al-Ash'ad ibn, ibn Qais. Uh, one of the uh, personality, very, very famous in the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq. He repented later on and he became a righteous uh, you know, believer and the ulama, Imam, Imam Ibn Hajar, uh, you know, uh, quotes him and the other ulama, they agreed with him is that these personalities, inshallah, they are from the Ashabi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can we know who is a Sahabi? From the text of the Quran and from the text of the authentic Hadith. These are the only two sources. From the statement of a Sahabi who says, I met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or I went to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as long as the statement is connected with authentic chain of narration. 
or a Sahabi saying so and so went with me to see the Messenger Sallallahu Their recommendation that so and so met the Prophet Sallallahu All of this will make somebody a Sahaba for through which we will know who are the Sahaba. One of the best way to know about the Sahaba is to read Sayyid Bukhari Sahih Muslim for the commoners to understand. And also we need to understand that this matter is being studied from old time until today, until the uh, time this religion will be there by the ulama of Ahl al-Hadith. So we go to their books and their books will tell us who is a Sahabi, who will not a Sahabi, inshallah. So it's not a matter of confusion, inshallah. There are many books written with regards to the biography of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the oldest one is the Tabaqat of Ibn Sa'ad or the Tariqh of Ibn Sa'ad, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and that has uh, the, the names and the descriptions of the companions, some of their, uh, you know, stories uh, in his book. And then after that, Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and many of them wrote books. We have the Tariqh al-Bukhari, the, uh, the, the Tariqh or the, you know, the books of the biography of Imam al-Bukhari and many other ulama, they wrote about a Sahaba al -Kram. especially they wrote about the books of the Sahaba, but many of these books, the book of Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, many of these books are, we can only find reference in the old books. But the original manuscript is not found as yet. Maybe one day people will find it or maybe they have already found it. But when they will find it, they will make the tahqiq of it and they will publish it and it will come to the hands of the believers. But we have uh, some of the, the past scholars, the famous ones I'm going to mention. One of the book is Al-Isaba Fi Ma'rifati Sahaba. This is the book of Imam Ibn Hajar, Al-Asqalani, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. The Isaba, meaning he's saying the reaching the right verdict with regards, regards to Al-Isaba Fi Tamiz is Sahaba. Tamiz is Sahaba. The, the reaching the correct verdict with regards to ranking of the companions of the Prophet. This is one of the very uh, good book written and a very what is called a, a book, a reference book for the people to go and learn about the Sahaba. Another great book of reference is the book of the great Imam of Andalus, Ibn Abdul Bar al Andalusi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, with his book Al Istiab fi Ma'arifatil Ashab. Uh, the comprehensiveness with regards to the studying the lives of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu And the other one which is very praised is the book of Imam Ibn Al-Athir Rahmatullahi Ali Al-Jazari. Uh, the book Uzdul Ghaba Fi Ma'rifati Sahaba. The Lions of the Forest with regards to the uh, the knowing the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu And by this he is basically referring to the Sahaba as the Lions. As the Lions because they were the ones who established the deen, carried the deen, believed in the Messenger Sallallahu supported him, established the deen and the deen and the enjoyment that we enjoy in many parts of the world is because of the sacrifice and because of their huge efforts. So this series inshallah will be uh, a, a good eye opening for us as how they used to believe in the Prophet Sallallahu how they followed him, how they supported him. So inshallah we can uh, uh, follow them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the example of the Sahaba before even they were born, many many years ago, Allah praised them in the Torah and Injil and made the believers in the time of Isa and Musa alayhi salam to understand that there will be a group of people who will come much later and they will accompany the last messenger Ahmed or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and their description will be such and such, such and such and such and such. If those people who did not even meet, uh, uh, were there before them, they were told about them. So think about us. Uh, we even deserve more to learn about our Sahaba and to follow them. But this should be done, of course, based upon the authentic uh, narration or the authentic hadith or the authentic report, inshallah, which has been uh, graded by the ulama of the hadith. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.